Hi, Real Brothers, Real Sisters. Welcome to Real Power for Greatness, where you are empowered to walk in your great destiny in Christ Jesus without apology. Real Power for Greatness is brought to you by Real Brothers, Real Sisters. It's the world's first global one-on-one -on -one Christian and professional mentorship network for all youth and young adults across the body of Christ. My name is Wesley Ogude. If you are born again, youth, young adult, anywhere in the world, I am your real brother. You are my real brother. You are my real sister. But if you're there wondering what does real brother, real sister mean, or what does it mean to be born again in the family of, in the royal family of God, it would suggest to me that perhaps you are yet to become a member of God's amazing royal family. I do make a promise to you that at the end of this uh, conversation, I will give you an opportunity someone gave me many years ago to become part of God's amazing royal family. In today's episode of Royal Power for Greatness, I want to keep my promise um, to discuss this particular episode. It is episode 21. It is what I have titled, How to Recognize the Powerful Voice of God, Part 1. Now remember this is a conversation, so please send me your questions. Some of you have been sending me your questions, uh, but now I'm providing you my email address so you can write your question directly to me at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com. I will make time to address your questions. You can also reach out to me if you want to be, be join our dynamic team of youth and young adults, uh, making a difference and impacting youth all over the world. If you want to join our team, uh, please send a, an email to me at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com. Please also remember to subscribe to all our channels across all platforms and send the links to your, you know, your friends, your, your family, and, and especially youth and young adults in your space. Let them know about Royal Power for Greatness because the truth that God is uh, helping us to share on this channel is going to help so many people just the way it helped me. So in today's uh, um, episode, um, it is the part one. So we are going to answer three questions. The first question is, how powerful is the voice of God? How powerful? That's number one question. Number two, what are some potential challenges I might face if I cannot recognize God's voice? And number three question we are going to answer is, how do I recognize God's voice with absolute certainty? With absolute certainty. Now, because I want to keep our conversation relatively short based on the feedback I've received from some of you, uh, in part one, we are going to cover how powerful is the voice of God. And then the second question we are going to cover in this part is what are some potential challenges I might face if I cannot recognize God's voice? And then in part two, we will wrap up and answer the third question. So let's go. Now, by way of introduction, hearing God's voice through the Holy Spirit is the birthright of every born-again child of God, without a single exception. I mean, no exception. Every single born-again child of God in the royal family of God, it is your birthright, if you are born again, and my birthright to hear the voice of God. Scripturally speaking, it is absolutely impossible to become a child of God without hearing the voice of God through the Holy Spirit. There's no way you could have been born again. There's no way I could have been born again. So you heard God's voice. If you are born again, I heard God's voice. Okay, here are three scriptural evidences to prove that every born again child of hears the voice of God. Number one, at conversion, it is the voice of the Holy Spirit that convicted us to repent of our sins. Okay? So you know that no one can become a child of God without repenting of his or her sin and accepting Christ as Lord and Savior. Now that process involves conviction. That conviction of sin, it, ha it, it happened to you and I because we heard the Holy Spirit. 
who made us to realize that we were sinners and we needed a savior so in john 16 8 nkjv the scripture says and when he has come that is the holy spirit he will convict the world so you and i were in the world we were in sin he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment so he will convict the world so everybody that is crossing from the world into god's kingdom and becoming born again must have had that experience so holy spirit spoke to you spoke to me you know to make me realize that i was a sinner and and i gave my life to jesus christ so so at conversion everybody hears the voice of the holy spirit before you get born again okay number two evidence god's holy spirit as many who are god's children scripturally not some of them not most of them as many okay romans chapter 8 verse 14 in the contemporary english version cev it says on watch this only those people only those people who are led by god's spirit are his children it's only those people so if anybody says i, I you know i can't i don't hear the, the voice of god or i'm not being led by the spirit that person is not a child of god now you can say that you don't understand when god leads you that's a different subject or you don't you hear god but you probably don't understand him how he's speaking which is the purpose of this this particular conversation now so that scripture we read says that only those who are led by god's spirit are his children only those who are led by his spirit so those who are not led by his spirit who don't interact with his spirit who don't know the holy spirit who don't hear the holy spirit they are not the children of god okay so number three evidence jesus said every child of god hears his voice jesus said that so jesus cannot lie so if somebody says i'm born again but i don't hear the voice of god well jesus said every child of god hears his voice so you see that you see that that person is lying or jesus is lying so jesus can't lie so every child of god hears the holy spirit now you are going to see in the course of this conversation where the confusion seems to lie okay now let's go to the scripture in john chapter 18 verse 37 um nkjv the scripture says pilate therefore said to him that is to jesus are you a king then jesus answered you are you say rightly i am a king for this cause i was born and for this for this purpose i have come into the world that i may bear witness to the truth watch this every one who is of the truth hears my voice every one who is of the truth hears my voice remember jesus is the way the truth and the life so everyone who is of jesus who is of the truth hears my voice note that everyone everyone okay so now the question is so why do some born again believers say they don't hear from god you know because of my privileged position of having been in the youth and young adult space for um close to about 30 years right i've been I've been working with youth and young adult my my wife and i and some of them ask the question but god doesn't speak to me i don't hear god so so why do why do they say that now in one of my meditation session i was wondering i was i was asking the holy spirit why do some believers say that they don't hear they don't hear the voice of god and here's what the holy spirit said to me he said to me ask them do they hear chinese ask them so let me ask you do you hear chinese well your first reaction may be no i i don't hear chinese now i didn't say do you understand chinese i said do you hear chinese okay meaning that if a chinese lady or if a chinese man or woman is speaking would you hear the person would you know oh this person is speaking chinese well for me um this 
based on where I live, the part of the world where I live. I live in Canada, and it's a very, very multicultural society that we live. I know Chinese people. I don't even need to see. If I, if I hear a Chinese person speaking Chinese language, I will hear. I will hear. I may not understand. Okay? I may not understand. So, what happens, the people that say that they don't hear the Holy Spirit and they are born again, actually, the Holy Spirit made me to understand that it's not that they don't hear, it is just that they don't understand. Just like Chinese, you hear Chinese, you can't say you don't hear Chinese, you don't understand Chinese, but you can hear. It's the same thing with the, with the voice of God, with, with the child of God, okay? When you are still young in your faith and you are not yet fully mature and grown, you know, and when God speaks, you will hear him, but you may not understand. You may not even know he's speaking. How do we know that? In the, in, we have an example in scripture in the Old Testament, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. The scripture says, Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times. Watch that. Meaning that before this time, God had been calling, was calling this young, young believer, uh, you know, Samuel. At this time, Samuel had not known the Lord, had not developed, you know, strong relationship with, with God, right? And the scripture says, now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, speak for your servant hears. If you remember this story, before Samuel did this, Samuel had gone twice to Eli, thinking it was Eli that was calling him. So Samuel heard, but he didn't understand. He didn't understand what was going on. It's the same thing. Many youth and young adults today, they hear the Holy Spirit. They hear the voice of God, but they don't understand. In other words, they read their Bible, but the pastor is preaching. Those are avenues through which we hear God's, God's voice, which we are going to see very shortly. Or the Holy Spirit is ministering some things to them, you know, true small voice of the Holy Spirit. But they, they, they are hearing, but they don't understand. So when people say that they don't hear God and they are truly born again, what they are saying is that they don't understand. But you certainly hear God. Let me give you an example. If you are born again there, you would know. Now, have you heard something say to you when you want to, when you want you get up in the morning and something tells you, oh, it is time to get up and read your Bible. Or you want to talk to somebody and you, you, you finish talking to somebody and you said something that is incorrect and you hear something within you say, you just lied there. That thing you said is not correct. I'm sure you, are, you experience such things. Every child of God experiences that, you know. Or, you know, you are married and you and your husband, you, you know, you didn't quite end the day well and something tells you, oh, go and apologize to your husband. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. It can't be the devil and it can't be your flesh, okay? It's the Holy Spirit. So, every believer hears God, okay? But we want to know um, how do you recognize God's voice, okay? So, let's answer the first question here. The first question is, how powerful is the voice of God? God's voice is very, very powerful, okay? God's voice is one of the most powerful supernatural forces in the entire universe God's word through his voice created the world and rules it sovereignly okay in Psalm 29 Psalm 29 from verse 4 to 8 uh, in the New King James Version the scripture says that the voice of the Lord is watch this powerful the voice of the Lord is full of majesty the voice of the Lord breaks the cedar yes the Lord speaks Splitters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also to skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian, like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Okay? In this scripture, now, this scripture is literal, okay? 
in other words, God's voice can do all of these things literally. It can also be applied. It's also, it's also something that we can apply. It's symbolic as well. So what does that mean? You know, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord, it breaks the, the cedar. The voice of the Lord, you know, um, divides the flame. What does it mean? Okay? There are three things it means to apply to our lives today. Number one, God's voice solves long-standing problems supernaturally. If you and I can develop our relationship with Jesus Christ to the level where we can recognize His voice, I've just established from scripture that we all hear his voice. But we can recognize his voice and understand his voice. It solves supernatural problems. In Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 29. In the Living Bible, CLB, Jeremiah 23, 29. Here's what the scripture says. Does not my word burn like fire, says the Lord. Is it not like a mighty, watch this, a mighty hammer that smashes a rock to pieces? That's the word of God. Now, if you hear the word of God on any mountain, any challenge, and that's been my own life, by, by the very special grace of God, I hear God very clearly, very distinctly. I hear God dramatically, very, I mean... I, in some cases when God speaks to me, it's very dramatic, okay? You've had me share one of those, you know, very, very uh, dramatic way that God spoke to me. You probably have seen this. I want you to watch this couple, okay, on this, on the screen. Now, in, in our past edition, I, sh I shared the story of this couple. Let me also say to you in this, in this particular edition, what happened to this couple. If you have not watched that. Uh, that that edition, I, I would encourage you to go back to it. Now, what happened to this couple? I'm talking about the voice of God solved long-standing problem. This couple that you are seeing on the screen, okay, um, they the the husband and the wife were married for a number of years. Uh, we used to attend the same church, uh, the same local church in in Toronto. Um, with their permission, they said for me to share their story to the glory of the Almighty God. But it's just to illustrate that the voice of God solves supernatural problem. So they were waiting on God. They were, you know, they were married. They didn't have children and things like that. So my pastor and I went um, to pray for them. It was just a casual visit. We just went for visitation. I was a youth pastor of Foursquare Gospel Church, Toronto, uh, in Canada at this point in time. And so we went to, uh, and they were, you know, they were newly married. And uh, we went there for some years. They've not had children. And as we were praying, just in their living room, I heard the voice of God. Watch this. I heard God say to me, now I want to bless them with children. Ask them, how many children do they want? In what order do they want the children? Can you believe that? Okay, now here's my point. I heard God's voice. I was sure that was God's voice, okay? And I told my pastor that God had just spoken to me regarding this couple, okay? And I, that I, I wanted to deliver a message to them. The couple were kneeling in front of us. My pastor and I were standing up and we were talking. And then my pastor said, oh, go ahead and share the message uh, that God gave to you. Um, that wasn't strange to my pastor because we've been together for, for quite a, a number of years. And by God's grace, he's, whole, he's seen God speak to me. My pastor too hears from God, you know. Um, you know. And so... Um, pastor said go ahead and share the message and I told the, the couple I said well God just told me now that he is ready to bless you now so now you need to tell God God wants you to specify how many children do you want and in what order do you want the children in other words do you want male female female male well, just specify it Wow. <laughs> now remember, I'm not a medical doctor, and even if I was a medical doctor, there's no way I can even give them children talk less of in what order, right? It must be the voice of God. And to prove that it is the voice of God, watch it. The, the couple um, didn't get the message initially, then, um, then I explained to them. Then they, they spoke to each other. 
So after speaking with each other, they just, you know, kind of agree, okay, how many children, whatever they were saying to themselves. Then the man spoke. The man said, we want two children. We want a girl first, and we want a boy next. Watch what is on the screen. Exactly what God gave to them. Did you see that? They had a girl first. That's the girl that you see in that picture, okay? And after that, they had a boy. And it's just two children they've had. No more, no less. That is an example of how powerful the voice of God is. It solves long-standing problems. So if you're a youth and young adult, and you, are, you have not developed your intimate work with Jesus Christ, you are leaving potentials on the table. Okay, we'll get to that. So God's voice solves long-standing problems. It's been the, the same for me. You know, I will share my own story as we go, but let me go, on, go ahead. So how powerful is the voice of God? Number two, God's voice leads us into our glorious future with precision, with precision. If you as a youth and young adult, if you develop your intimate work with Jesus Christ such that you can recognize and understand his voice. I have just established to you that he speaks to you. You, you just don't understand. If you can de develop that intimate work and be able to understand God, right? <laughs> you know, you will enjoy some, you, some extraordinary things in your life. One of those things is that God's voice it leads us into our glorious future with precision. Okay, in Isaiah chapter 30, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, in the names of God, N-O-G version of the Bible. The scripture says, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, follow it. Whether it turns to the right or to the left, that's what the scripture says. Now, I can, I can give you examples of upon example, my own personal experience right working with god hearing his voice let me give you another example of my my how how god's voice can lead us with precision god's voice can lead you can god can tell you who your wife is can lead you can guide you on a job um you know whether you are you want to take on a particular job whether you want to go on a trip whether you want to marry somebody i mean there are tough decisions in life you know that we need guidance God's voice can guide us with precision okay every major thing in my life God guided me including coming to Canada okay I will get to that but let me give you an example of how God led me into the future of my family when my wife was pregnant and we were about to have our first baby okay God told me he said you are expecting your son you are expecting your son we didn't do scan. We didn't do anything. We didn't know. God said, he said, I was expecting my son. So on the day my wife wanted to give birth to our first child, okay? Um, in fact, our faith was so much on fire that my wife didn't go to, uh, didn't go to um, hospital and tonight. We just prayed and trusted God and things like that, you know? And God told me that I was expecting a, I was expecting a boy. So um, on the eve of the day that she would deliver, um, I went to the place where she, she was going to uh, ha ha have delivery and um, I laid my hand on my wife and I spoke there and I said, son, um, I'm coming back tomorrow morning to come and, you know, to come and, you know, to, co to come and welcome you about make sure you don't trouble mommy, okay? I'm coming back. Daddy's coming back to pick you. And one of the midwives there looked at me and said, um, you know, how are you sure he's a, he's a boy? I said, well, I, I, I'm sure he's a boy. God already told me that he's a boy. And uh, I just went, I never doubted. Why? Because I understand God's voice. He told me already. The next morning I was coming, it was that same midwife that I saw as I was approaching the place to go and welcome my son. And she saw me and she was so excited. She said, oh, wow, congratulations. You are correct. He's actually a boy. For me, I knew he's a boy already. How did I know that? How could I know that? The future, a child that's, has not been born, I already know the future that is a boy and, and I'm going to have a son. Well, the voice of the Lord. So God's voice is you know, it guides us. It can guide into who you will marry and so on and so forth. Okay, number three, God's voice gives us supernatural peace in the midst of the storm of life. Okay, if you can hear the voice of God and hear what he's saying, okay, 
in the midst of you know difficulties and challenges you will become let me give you my own example let's first look at the scripture now in isaiah chapter 30 verse verse 21 that we have read the scripture says, um the scripture says you will hear a voice we've read that okay but the scripture also says that and god's peace which is so great we cannot understand it will keep your hearts and minds in christ jesus god's peace okay so when we hear the voice of god it gives us peace it gives us peace let me give you an example there was a time in my career okay when i was still um in paid employment as an employee by the grace of god today i'm an entrepreneur i will never need a job again in my entire life but when i was still an employee i lost my job and when i lost my job it was a very tough very challenging time and shortly after i lost my job i also lost lost my of, official car they stole my official car but god had already told me that i was going to get a job in fact he told me that so i was calm so when i heard that they stole my official car guess what i did i went into my into my closet into my study and i was dancing i was dancing i was dancing i was praising god i was dancing in fact i had praised god into i've gone into my praise for one whole hour when my wife called and said did you report to the police i didn't even remember to report to the police but what's my point when you can hear the voice of god you are calm in the midst of storm eventually what happened to the glory of the almighty god today body car and the job and everything god restored everything we own the car we own the car we own the company today okay so that's what the voice of god can do let's go quickly so what are some potential challenges i might face if i cannot recognize god's voice okay before we do that let's quickly take a break and hear from rbrs royal youth for christ ryfc presents the 2023 royal iron sharpen iron Risi an annual spiritual empowerment retreat for youth and young adults across the body of Christ, featuring life-transforming and insightful teachings from God's Word, intense prayers and uplifting praise and worship. It offers an opportunity to share and interact with other believers across different churches from a selected faith-building pre-reading book titled Exploit of Faith by Bishop David Oyedepo. Theme, Developing a Great Faith for Greatness. Date, March 10th and 12th, 2023. Venue, 673-394, here Ontario Street, Mono, Ontario, L9W5R8, about one hour from Toronto. Fee is $150, which includes two nights accommodation. To register for limited slots, please scan the QR code on the screen. Email us at communication at royalyouthforchrist.com or visit royalyouthforchrist.com. RYFC, empowering the younger generation for greatness. Welcome back. All right. So um, we were trying to answer the second question. It says in this part one, it says, what are some potential challenges I might face if I cannot recognize God's voice? Okay, let's go through to three of them there are many number one future regrets okay future regrets now if you and i cannot recognize god's voice even though god is speaking i've already told you that from scripture if we can't recognize or understand his voice okay there is potential for us to take you know decisions that we might regret in future so number one is future regrets future regrets about critical decisions which may appear to be right to us humanly. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, the voice edition of the scripture says, Before every person lies a road that seems to be right, but the end of that road is death and destruction. May you not take a road that will lead to death and destruction in Jesus' name. But that is the potential. You see a lady, she looks very beautiful. You know, she sings in the choir and, and you know, she, she, she appears to be spiritual and all that. Well, you didn't hear from God. You, know, you ended up marrying that. Now, I've been married for, this is over, over 20, uh, 28 years. It's going to be our 29th year of, of marriage. No regret one single day. But in these 29 years, I have heard Christians 
who have been married for 15 years and 20 years or even longer and they look back and say oh i made a mistake i should not have married that brother i should not have married that sister not hearing the voice of god or not being able to understand god's voice can potentially lead to such okay some in some cases some people will take a job and jump from one job and go to the next one and the next because it pays it pays more and guess what they jump to the second job and shortly after that um, company collapses okay goes bankrupt and their previous uh, job they would have promoted them that they, they didn't know that okay so that's the kind of thing that could happen if one does not understand the voice of god the number two challenge potential challenge okay um is the danger of deceit that's the number two potential challenge um, that you and I will face if we cannot recognize God's voice as God's children. The danger of deceit, okay? In other words, we may be deceived by men and we may be deceived by the devil, okay? So if you are not sure or you don't know how to, you know, how to discern God's voice, somebody may just come to you and you know tell you i saw a revelation i saw a vision or a prophet or one fake pastor or not even a fake pastor it might even be you you had a dream or or somebody came to you and said oh uh, god spoke to me that you are going to be my wife or you're going to be my 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 husband or somebody had the revelation about you know and you you can be deceived i can be deceived Okay, the only way we cannot be deceived is when we can discern God's, God's voice so that he can lead us. Right? In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 11, 3, in the New International Version of the Bible, NIV, the scripture says, But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. So if we are not able to discern God's voice, we can easily be deceived, you know. Um, number three, confusion and fear. That is the potential challenge to the glory of the almighty God. On any major decision in my life, who to marry, where to live, my calling, my purpose in life, you know, career, all, all of those things, to the glory of the Almighty God, I have never been confused. Why? Because of that birthright that every child of God, it's, it's nothing about me that is special or a pastor, and every child of God, God loves all of us the same way. Every child of God has that birthright to hear from God. But if you hear and you don't understand, that's where the challenge comes. So confusion and fear. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33, the new the new king james version and kjv the scripture says for god is not the author of confusion but of peace as in all the churches of the saints god is not the author of confusion so many people are confused about who to marry today they see a lady they go into that relationship they say it doesn't work they they they, they come out after six months maybe emotionally they are bruised and then and they get into another relationship you know they dump the lady and go for another one you know and some some say that god has led them and then god leads them to three sisters of you know uh, or a sister may even be in the fellowship and three brothers come and say god led me god led me so so how can god lead three people to one sister right then somebody must be lying right now it's not necessarily that they are lying in some cases they are sincere but they are just sincerely wrong because they cannot discern or be able to identify the voice of God so confusion and fear how does fear come in at times God is speaking to you to take some some bold steps for example at the time we were coming to Canada it was a very fearful thing for me to resign my job you know my I dropped my key my driver the house help you know we sold everything we had we're coming to a country that we have never been before and they told us how tough it was going to be i was not afraid even when we got to the country canada right you know this was over 21 years ago it was tough the initial the first few years were very very tough years but because i had heard god's voice i was not afraid about my future okay that's what happens if we are if we can hear god's voice it can prevent confusion and fear but if we do not we'll face that challenge now let me begin to wrap up so um in this part one we have uh, answered you know um two out of three questions the questions we answered are 
Number one, how powerful is the voice of God? We saw that. Number two, we said, what are some potential challenges I might face if I cannot recognize God's voice? And then in part three, we will be looking at how do I recognize God's voice with absolute certainty. I mean, absolute certainty. Just like I told you, God said he's a boy and he, he never turned out to be a girl. God told me to tell those couple whatever they said, they said a, a girl first and a, and a boy first. And it was exactly absolute certainty. You can, you know, every child of God has the potential uh, to be able to recognize God's voice. We'll cover that in part two, part two of the message. So please be ensure that you don't go away. You don't, uh, you don't miss it. Uh, I want to keep my promise that I made. Um, if you have no relationship uh, with, with, with the Lord Jesus Christ, um, or you were saved some time ago, but, um, you know, but, but something happened, you got disconnected. It will be my joy and my honor and privilege to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. To give you the same, the same opportunity that somebody gave me. Um, it was on, on, on 19th of July, 1987, uh, that somebody gave me the opportunity uh, to make this decision. And that changed my life forever. So if you are there, I want you to just bow down your head and pray this prayer with me shortly. Okay? I want you to say after me, Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I believe you died for me and rose on the third day. I accept you today as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer sincerely, I want to welcome you to God's amazing family. Um, I want you to please get into a Bible-believing church, okay? Because everyone in the kingdom belongs to a local church. There is no orphan in the kingdom, including myself, I belong to a local church and I also want you to go to our website um, is www.royalyouthforchrist.com click on RBRS and then click on RBRS convert complete that form and um, someone from our team will be in touch um, with you so that we can be part of you know your amazing journey with the Lord Jesus Christ so this is the end of this particular episode don't forget um, that every other Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time will be posting a new uh, conversation, a new video um, to, the, to the glory of the Almighty God to, by the very special grace of God. Before I come your way next time, I am your royal brother, Wesley Ogude. I love you all. God bless you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS.